Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting bit of Propaganda Cast News from your host, Imperial Dane. We've got a big tourney map update and balance tuning update here from October 8th, basically overhauling the following maps Nexus, Langaraskaya, Holotni Fermasama, and Femimal Approach, getting some, in some cases, major reworks. Though Holotni Ferma, I think, is just basically slightly removing a fence down south, overall, nothing big, whereas Femimal gets a serious overhaul, Langaraskaya as well. And Nexus also gets a big one. A lot of them against just, I think they removed a fence down south, sort of roughly. Moving on to the balance changes, the Storm Officer gets a slight buff there. So it's a bit harder to kill initially. But obviously that does come at a decrease at the cost of the veterans bonus there, veterans 4, but that's about it. Slack half track gets increased suppression, so you can better deal with infantry assaults. Then we come to the bigger stuff because the USF is getting a nerf since they kind of got pushed a bit to. Um, far early on with the rifleman buff basically they're increasing the cost of the officers so it basically costs more to take up effectively from 200 to 250 manpower but they reduce the build time on the other hand they then increase the command post upgrade for like mechanized particularly it's the platoon command post where they sort of effectively add a few more seconds to it i mean it basically means it takes a total of five more seconds things will really get it out though of course it does come a slightly higher manpower cost i'm not so sure this is actually going to be effective because i mean it's going to be out you know much faster with the lieutenants that might also mean someone just go lieutenant captain and just have two very efficient infantry squads up because again the lieutenant and the captain also got better from the rifleman buffs i mean that one could be a bit more dangerous though of course that is not all there's also the m20 utility car which basically now has increased build time so, I mean, it does hit slower and it no longer has the bazooka, so it can't, for example, counter the 222 as easily. In fact, it can't at all, though, of course. What might just happen is, of course, they go straight for the sewer light tank anyway, so. I mean, I'm not entirely sure about uh, that one. I mean, M20 to suit is also a very effective strategy. Meanwhile, Pershing gains an experience increase. Fair enough. Rifleman, slower to lay down. Also nice, I guess. And then they make the 50 cal a bit slow to get out. There's been over again. While Lieutenant and Captain hit fast, they basically made a lot of the key elements of the platoon command post hit a bit slower but again lieutenant captain both two ourselves being out faster might lead to some problems even they're slightly more expensive because they're still very efficient to get out and that's really an important thing to keep up you'll have to see if this has an, any actual effect again it might slow down some things again make the m20 a little less efficient but overall the american still a this very incredibly snowballing faction and I'm not entirely sure how much this is going to be helpful for some for the Wehrmacht, who's still going to struggle, I think, a lot here, and they really should, you know, buff the Wehrmacht, which is the one thing they aren't. For the British, the infantry section now goes from 280 to 270, and they get an accuracy bonus of actually 3, which seems a bit interesting. I mean, this, like, they were nerfing them because they're just blobbing up and, you know, spamming them, and this effectively encourages that once more. It's obviously easier to kill them, but... Yeah, I'm not super sold on that. In addition, the Comet gets cheaper and it basically gets a better machi whole machine gun, which overall makes it a bit more efficient. It's now basically cheaper than a Panther, easier to get, and overall much more flexible. Obviously, it's not good, as good versus tanks as the Panther, but overall it is better, and that is, well, kind of dangerous, honestly. Commandos are also getting a bit of a price reduction there, so that makes them nasty. And the Bofors uh, turns faster? That seems a bit dangerous. So, no. so there you go. Apparently also the Stormtrooper Panzer Shake apparently was supposed to cost 60. In, well, apparently cost 75, was supposed to cost 60. So I guess that's nice. But yeah, overall, I mean, obviously this will lower slightly the American, so I would say higher yield. But at the same time, I don't think it really changes a lot. Then, for example, the Valmont versus USF like matchup because, again, it's still this incredibly snowballing match and if you can't really stop that snowball fast you're gonna get overrun because the Wehrmacht still lacks the ability to bounce back versus them again like there's something knacking there and with the British this might just further encourage infant section spam which was the problem before because of difficult stop and again it could also snowball up very fast because both factions have easy efficient tech compared with say focus of the Wehrmacht even the Obelkommandos doesn't have as easy cheap and efficient tech because again they just press a button they get the tech and they get the building at the same time and the americans of course get added units so i'm not so sure this patch is going to like do a lot of wonders and certainly for the tournament there's a certainly good chance it's going to be primarily orbital command of versus usf so it's maybe some brits but not a lot of them up because again they're not really touching upon the fact that you know 
half track buff, mortar buff, basically fell flat on the ground. And while the G43s were nice, were not really enough to really care the valve at the head because the problem still remains there. Yeah, T2 is kind of fnir. I mean, you're really only going to use the T2 in the pack four. The half track still isn't very good. And tier 3 still suffers also from just being, you know, slightly underperforming compared with everyone else thinking get out, kinda. And tier 4 is just bad. Like, it's just too expensive, too much effort. It's the electronic arts of tech trees, basically. Just paying for the privilege to pay more, whereas the others are getting freebies and bonuses whenever they tech out. And you just sort of stuck, well, I've hit tier 4. And now I basically get units that don't really do particularly well in a lot of cases. So it's just... It feels very unfortunate to be a Valorant player at the moment, and like, I feel like they could have done something. I mean, there's a ton of things you can do. I mean, one option would be, you know, how about taking away the armor upgrades for the Valorant units that get armored sites, skirts, make them a you know, separate upgrade you can just pay for right away and then give them a better Veteran 2 bonus. I feel like that would have a significant, you know, for some benefit to the Valorant mid to late game because all of a sudden again, A, they can quickly just get their stuff armored up, making more survival, plus better Veteran 2 bonuses would also make them scale better, which I feel like in particular in the case of the Stu 3G is kind of the issue, like Betsy 2 is just out of junk. I mean, the Stu does not scale very well until it suddenly hits Betsy 3 if it gets that far, and that's kind of the issue with a lot of the Valmark equipment there, so I feel like that could be an option, but otherwise, you know, some sort of bonus at Tier 4. Again, I still recommend some Knight's Crossholder equivalent. Like, again, they want this to be that, you know, similar to the company's one Valmark, so give them the bloody Knight's Crossholder. So give them some orbs done with infinite assault rifles, just assault rifles that can be upgraded into those. Something like that, so something else. But just, you know, give them something useful and make tier 4 better, damn it. But I feel like, again, just giving them a separate arm upgrade and then a better 82, I think, could fix a bunch of the issues. And, of course, make the 250 and a half tank a bit better. Like, give it some other upgrade that doesn't require to be a flamethrower, but, you know, just makes it a bit overall better in combat. I think that would also, you know, do some good there. So, yeah, again, like, it will change some things with this patch, obviously, but... I am not too sure it's going to have a big effect, effect there in the Vermark setup, which is already there and things are struggling, which I think if sort of looking at most of the complaints I see from people, it's very much the Vermark does not feel very good versus both well, any of the factions. And and I have also had a lot of complaints about people not wanting to bring like, you know, Vermark to the tournament. In fact, I've only had one, one player that's going to bring Vermark to that tournament there. So, and I feel like, this patch is not going to like make the Wehrmacht more attractive, so I mean we'll see, but I'm not particularly optimistic about this. So we'll have to see. We shall have to see. But that is the propaganda cast news for now. Remember to please like, subscribe, and share, and press that bell button. I'll be off for now, but there'll probably be more news in the future. So cheers.